Hi guys, I'm David with Media Unlocked, and today I'm going to start a small series on the Canon T2i and exactly how to use the Canon T2i. Uh, and what I mean by that is I'm literally going to go through every button and function that this thing pretty much does, and uh, I'm going to explain it to you. Far as if you notice, you have all these different icons on this dial right here, but you probably have no idea what half of them do or how to use them, or maybe you just understand how to use the automatic settings, but you don't understand how to use the manual settings. Or, uh, or a lot of these other buttons, auto white balance, uh, uh, you know, your auto focus. So what I'm going to do is over the next uh, couple, couple weeks to a month, I'm going to put out small little uh, videos explaining each function of this camera until we've got the whole entire thing uh, pretty much explained to you. Uh, but before I do that, I feel like I need to touch on what I, you know what I really call like one of your main three things about photography um, and those are your ISO your shutter speed and your aperture and uh, if you don't understand really what they do having the knowledge of how to use them makes it well somewhat difficult so uh, we'll jump right into the ISO um, your ISO usually ranges anywhere from uh, 100 or as low down as 50 on your full-frame cameras I believe um, all the way up into, I think, 100,000. Um, but camera like the Canon T2i, it ranges from 100 to 6,400. Now, what your ISO is, the lower the ISO is, the, the higher quality your photo is going to be, but in exchange, the more light you need to get the higher quality. So say you're like in a bar or something, or a club, or a darker, darker like a theater, um, darker situation, you're probably going to set your ISO probably around 1600. Um, the higher your ISO is, the more light it allows in, but you start losing quality. You, if you've noticed those photos that have pixelization and they just don't look that good, their ISO is pretty high. Um, next would be your shutter speed. Now your shutter speed um, is, is, uh, is for like movement stuff. So say like a soccer game, you're going to want your shutter speed higher because there's going to be a lot of movement. So it's a, if it's a bright day, you probably want to set your shutter speed around uh, 300, 400 um, for like a soccer game, let's say, and your ISO down to 100. So you're going to get the highest quality because your ISO is down to 100. But you're, uh, you're also going to be able to catch that movement. But say it's, you know, it's evening time, you have to drop your ISO down to like 800 and your shutter speed, you know, even at 800 ISO, your shutter speed is being brought down to uh, say 150. You're going to get that blur, you know, when your when your kid goes out or someone goes out to make that kick or throw in or whatever. You're going to get a, a blur. Now, for some people, that's great. Um, another thing with uh, shutter speed: the lower your shutter speed, the more light you're going to get. So, say it's really dark outside, and you can set your shutter speed to like 30 seconds or a minute, um, what's called bulb. Once you go to bulb, it's bulb. You mainly have to click it to start it and click it to stop it. Um, so say there's very small amounts of light outside, so you, you get it all the way down to bulb, and but you leave it out there for five or six minutes, that small amount of light is going to slowly take it in and the, uh, the picture is actually going to look pretty bright. So, um, so shutter speed has to do with light, of course, and then it has to do with movement. So uh, the next would be your aperture. Now your aperture has to do with how open your lens is. Um, at a very small aperture, like say 2.8, um, I'm sure you've you've seen lenses. Um, your kit lens is an 18 to th it was what a, uh, 18 to 55 lens, and it's the aperture is a 3.5 to 5.6. Now what that means is that your aperture will open up to what's you know so big at 3.5, it will allow more light in, and it gives you a better depth of field. Now the higher your aperture goes, the less light is going to is going to let in, but usually the higher quality your photo is going to be. So really, ideally, you want a high aperture, and a low, a high aperture, high shutter speed, and a low ISO to get a really good picture. But every situation is different. So uh, as far as aperture goes, when I'm shooting portraits and I'm using like flash photography, um, one thing when you're using flash photography, your shutter speed can't go over two or two fifty, or you're going to start getting these black lines across your across your uh, picture that is just going to not look good. And we'll go over that another time. Um, so, uh, but say you have a, you have a really nice lens, like a 7200 2.8, or even okay, let's say a 50 millimeter uh, 1.2, phenomenal lens, great L lens. Uh, but you're but if you drop you're in a dark situation, so you drop that aperture way down, 
which allows you to bring your ISO down as well. And you, you bring your shutter speed maybe around like 80 to 100. So uh, say you're shooting video with it, you're going to get an, a, an incredibly horrible depth of field, which can be good or bad. Say you're shooting a band with a 50 millimeter at a 1.2. Uh, you really aren't going to be able to focus on one person in the band at a time due to the simple fact the depth of field is going to be crazy at 1.2, but you bring your, say there's more light or something, and you end up bringing your aperture up to, uh, let's say, 5 or 6, then the depth of field is not going to be nearly that bad at all. So the higher your aperture is, the, uh, the, you know, the less the depth of field is. So if you have your aperture all the way up to 22, you're going to get everything's going to be clear in the picture that you're going to take. But you drop it down under under 2.8, then you're going to start getting a, a really nice nice depth of field. So uh, if you have any questions, more questions on ISO, shutter speed, and aperture, um, I'd be more than happy to uh, to explain it to you. What I'm going to do now is is uh, I'm going to set up this camera. I'm going to uh, put it in manual settings. I'm going to uh, turn some lights on and we're going to pick an out. I'm going to take an object, set it up, and I'm going to take some pictures of the object. And as I'm taking pictures, I will kind of explain to you the, how the ISO aperture and shutter speed works to the best of my ability. Um, and like I said, if you have any, any questions, you know, just shoot them my way and I'll, I'll try to be a little, more, um, a little more descriptive on how to use these three functions to get the best quality picture that you possibly can. So uh, again, um, over the next month or so, I'm really going to work on trying to, one, explain to you what each of these functions on the dial does, um, what, what you can do in your menu settings, um, how to set your own uh, auto white balance, because a lot of people, um, if you've ever noticed you've taken a picture, it looks a little blue, it looks a little yellow, it looks a little green, it looks a little orange, um, your, your auto white balance, you know, your, your white balance isn't good. So you, you got to learn how to automatically set that or manually set your white balance. Um, now, the nice thing about these newer cameras is the white balance does work really well with them. And nine times out of ten, you don't have to uh, manually set it. Now, I do when I'm doing professional work. So uh, let's jump right into how, how your depth of field or how your ISO aperture and shutter speed really works. Um, and we're going to take a couple pictures um, with an object. All right, guys. So... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you how to use the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO here. Um, as you can see, I've got two fluorescent lights. We're not going to jump into flash quite yet. And uh, what I have is a thing of paper towels, a cup. So I'm going to set the paper towels in front of the cup. And uh, I'm going to show you basically depth of field right off the bat. How you can, how you can get something in the front, in the foreground, to, to, to pretty much put the thing in the background out of focus. So, uh, and I will show you how to do each and every one of these functions when I start explaining how to use this camera. Um, that will probably be one of the first things that we go over when I go over the buttons and functions of the T2i. Or the 550D, as many like to call it. Uh, so I have my ISO at 100, my aperture at 3.5 right now, and my shutter speed at 60. I also, you have, um, you have your um, AF points, as you can see here. Let me bring this in a little bit closer so you can see this. Um, you have your AF points, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but my have this AF point selected. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the camera on the side, and I'm mainly going to be focusing on the uh, paper towel here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go like this. There's my paper towel. My AF point is going to pick it, which is going to throw my cup slightly out of focus. And I'm a little close, so we're gonna do that again. And my cup, my, my paper towel is in focus while my cup is a little bit out of focus. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, which is gonna bring my uh, aperture up just a teensy bit to probably 4.0 or 5.6. So I'm gonna bring my aperture up to 5.6, which you can still get that depth of field of 5.6. This has gotta be fairly close. So, um, and there's that picture. So I put the cup out of focus while the paper towel is in focus. Now I brought my aperture up to 5.6. So we're going to leave the aperture at 5.6. ISO is at 100. So it's going to, it was a little dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the ISO up to 400. And now you're going to see um, the light change. From 100 to 400, you're not going to see, see a huge quality difference here. So I'm going to take the same exact picture, pretty much, and things are a lot brighter now. 
Um, my shutter speed's at 60, so say I need more light right now. I'm gonna go on and drop the shutter speed down to 25 because nothing's moving except for me and you're not really gonna see movement from your, your person when you're taking a picture till about, uh, about 5, uh, 0.5 to on down to like a, a full second stop. So, um, so I'll drop it, actually I'll drop it down to like 15. So it's gonna, the shutter's gonna be open for 1 15th of a second, which is pretty open. So I gotta keep, my, I gotta keep myself fairly still so, and now it's really bright. Um, so, uh, and let's say I just drop it down to, uh, let's drop it down to one full second. Now, if you listen, hopefully you can hear this, you're gonna hear it, my shutter being open for a full second. So it's gonna take a second before you hear that click. Now it's way overexposed. So we're going to keep it at a second. I'm going to bring my ISO down because I need, it's way overexposed. It's too white. So the ISO is going to come down to, to make it, to make the exposure a little bit better. I'm going to drop my aperture up to like, we'll see, we'll, we'll bring it up to nine and we'll see if we can get that same picture, except a little more exposed. And it's a little bit better, but you're going to notice there's going to be some blur on that cup in the background. Um, so it's going to be some movement blur. And because it was a second, I can't hold it that still for a full second. Um, so I hope this explains a little bit. Feel free to ask questions. Um, I'm not the best when, I coming to ex when it comes to explaining this type of stuff. So if you have any more questions, like I said, just shoot them to me. Leave me a comment. Send me a message. And I will try to break it down for you, especially... Um, over the next probably three or four videos. So this is pretty much kind of your intro to give you kind of a heads up, you understand how to use the camera. So once I start explaining all the different functions and everything this camera does, you kind of have an idea how to use it um, in the manual settings. And there's, there's uh, let's see here, there are five different manual settings and then it goes into your automatic settings. And there's quite a few of those um, depending on what type of, you know, if you're doing sports, portrait, uh, flash, no flash. Um, as far as the automatic settings go. So we're gonna really, really dive into that and I'm gonna explain that to you over the next few videos. So uh, if there's something specific that you'd like to see in the video, then please let me know and I'll try to hit on it a little bit harder than I normally would. But the ISO aperture and shutter speed is just kind of giving you guys a heads up so you guys understood what's going on here once we uh, dive into this, to how to use this camera.